Hey everyone, welcome to New Life Kids Online. My name is PC. Thanks for tuning in today. If it's your first time or if it's your hundredth time watching, we are so glad you're with us today. As we're jumping into week number three of our series called Joshua Extreme Hero. We've had a great time in our first two lessons. If you missed either one of them, make sure you go back and get caught up. But today, man, we got a great one today. And I got a question for you. Have you ever needed to be encouraged to do something? Like there's something you wanted to do, you wanted to jump off a diving board, it's a little scary, and you just need a little encouragement to do it. And then your mom or your dad or someone cheers you on, you're able to do it. We all need a little encouragement sometimes. And we're gonna talk about a time when Joshua needed some encouragement and what God did. Are you ready? Let's jump in and find out what happens. Here we go. Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Ban, Ban Dave. I'm your extreme sports specialist and we're here to continue our extreme series on Joshua. Let's do this. In today's lesson, we're gonna be looking at a time in Joshua's life where he was chosen to follow an incredible leader, Moses. Speaking of follow the leader, I'm supposed to be meeting someone here to do an extreme stunt. This guy is supposed to be the leader in one of the most extreme sports ever. However, I don't know why he's not here yet. I'm right here. Huh? Are you ready to play? Man, I'm supposed to be here to meet somebody to do an extreme sport, not play. What are you trying to play? Follow the leader. Extreme! Are you kidding me right now? I'm supposed to be teaching these kids a lesson, and you want me to play follow the leader right now? Follow the leader. Extreme! Okay, whatever. How extreme could this possibly be? I'll show you. Follow me. just jumped all the way down into that ball pit. I ain't doing that. No way. I'm scared. Man, who knew that following the leader could be that hard? Joshua sure found out how hard following the leader could be though. When Moses died, God chose Joshua to become the leader of the people. Could you imagine following a leader like Moses? I mean, Moses was the guy that led the Israelites out of Egypt and did all sorts of miracles. Could you imagine following a leader like that? I bet Joshua was worried. But God spoke some amazing promises to Joshua that helped him with his fear of following the leader. And that's exactly what you're gonna learn about in your lesson today. I can't wait for you to hear all about the amazing promises that God spoke to Joshua and how he is gonna speak to you too. Well, I better let you get into it. And I guess I better jump into this ball pit. <sighs> Oh man, that was fun. I think I'm gonna do that again. Well, my name's Band-Aid, and I'll see you next time when we're learning another extreme lesson from Joshua. Hey kids, what time is it? Yay time! What's up, New Life Kids? What's good? It's Pastor Nar, Pastor Luke. We're here for a little bit of game, game time. time. Today, go. we are playing Wheel or, or doors. doors. I'm not really sure how we play, but we're just gonna we're jump gonna into it. it out. We're gonna dive in and see if we can't figure out how to play this game. Here, here are the rules. Each round, you'll decide if there are more wheels or doors. If you can see any part of the wheel or door, it, it counts. counts. Okay. All right. Sounds pretty simple. All right. 
Are we supposed to say, like, fastest? Who says the fastest? Doors! But, wheels? I, what? <laughs> Oh, oh. oh! We spoke too okay, soon, okay, Pastor okay. Luke. I get it now, I get it now, I get it now. Door! Door. I just spilled a little bit, I'm very sorry. Yes! Hey, alright. Let's go. Wheels. Wheels! I said it first. Let's <laughs> oh go. Doors! Nah, it is doors. <laughs> oh, I oh, the wheel! Why did I do that? It was a 50 50 chance. That was stupid. The this round, round is a word search. search. Oh. Oh my god. Door gosh. right there! Um, uh, Nobody can see another me door. Wheels. Another door. Oh, how many are in it? Wheels, wheels, uh, wheels, wheels, wheels. Doors, doors, doors. Yes. Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, I'm stressed. This, this round, round, you need to unscramble, unscramble the letters. Doors, doors, doors. wheels, wheels. Actually, wheels. Doors. Answer wheels. Hey, ah. get into it. Uh, okay. All right. Which have you? Have, what? Which what? have we seen more of in this game? Wheels or doors? Wheels. 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 Uh, Ah, uh, doors! Doors! <laughs> no, you can't change your answer. <laughs> you see if you say wheels, then that means I get doors. That's automatically how it works. All right, last one, last one, last right, one. I don't like it. this game. Which are there more of doors. in the wor world? Doors. This is such doors. a tough question because what counts as door? Like, is a trunk a door? Yes, like all your car doors. But what little... counts as a wheel? Is like a mechanism in like a, a nice watch? Considered a wheel, or are we just talking wheels that like on a car or a You're chair? You're hurting or, my brain, man. It, this is a, it's an intense question. Then you have to think about the people who don't have doors on their houses, like people who live in countries that aren't as well off as us. You know, oh they live in a gosh. hut. There's no doors on that, but they might have a wheel on their cart or for their donkey or you know. You're thinking way too hard. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna just say doors. Keep it simple. I'll go. I'm gonna. I'll go doors. I'll go. Uh, I don't know, cause a ha like a house only has like two. Do All right, I'll go doors. Garage doors. Exactly. Trunk doors. Trap doors. Attic yes. doors. All the doors. Front doors. Back doors. Door. Door. Okay. Door. <laughs> doors. Doors. The band. The doors. Okay. It's doors. Oh, it doesn't actually give us an answer. No. There isn't an answer for this. Would you think somebody <laughs> counted one? Or yes. Something? Nara. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guys. Listen. <laughs> That's it for game time. Yes. You guys need to go now and have a time of worship. And as you're worshiping, I want you to pray for Nara, okay? That God would take a hold of her brain and you just, heard it. You just, just, just use it for His glory, uh, because we need a miracle right now. It just happened when I was. Really Why would they tell you the answer? Like somebody went around and was like, one, two, three, in the entire world. Okay. Enjoy your time of worship, kids. Praise God for all the brain power that he has given you. Oh my gosh. We hope that you have a great rest of the <laughs> service. <laughs>
Well, you know what time it is. It's time to go and get your Bibles. If you already got it handy, you're set. You can just chill out for 10 seconds. For the rest of you, make sure to go get a Bible, whether it's a fire Bible, your parents' Bible, or just pulling it up on a tablet or a phone. Whatever it is, make sure to follow along at home. But we're going to give you 10 seconds to get ready. Are you all right? Go. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you're ready to go. Make sure to turn to the book of Joshua, chapter one. That's right, Joshua has his own book in the Bible that talks about all the things that happened in his life. We're gonna be looking at that for the rest of the series. The last two weeks, we've been leading up all the stuff, preparing him, getting him ready to take over for Moses. And today, we're gonna see what happens as he gets ready to start. Are you ready? Joshua, chapter one, or page 259 in your fire Bibles. Today, we're gonna to learn all about a moment in Joshua's life when he really needed some encouragement. Even though he was one of the spies that believed that God could take him into the promised land, Joshua faced an extreme assignment from God. Moses, the leader of God's people, had died, and God's people, the Israelites, had no leader. Joshua didn't know what to do, so he went out to be alone and to pray. Suddenly, God appeared to Joshua, and he said, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Well, I'm sure that Joshua must have been thinking, I know that already, God. It's not exactly a newsflash. But then God told Joshua that he must lead the people across the Jordan River and into the land that God was giving them. Joshua is really going to take over for Moses, the Moses? Remember now, this is the same Moses who parted the Red Sea so they could walk across on dry land. The same Moses who hit a rock with a staff and water came shooting out for them to drink. The same Moses who God met with face to face and gave the Ten Commandments to. That Moses? Yeah. Joshua was gonna take over for that Moses. Joshua thought, man, there's no way I could follow after that kind of leader. That is some big shoes to fill. Many times, we feel like there's no way that we can do what God's calling us to do. We fear that we might fail or mess up or not do it the right way. Joshua probably felt a lot of those same feelings. But God spoke to Joshua and gave him some incredible comfort and encouragement in that moment. God said, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wow, that's an amazing promise from God. Comforted and encouraged, Joshua left God's presence and went to speak to the commanders of the army. He said, get ready, we're gonna cross over the river Jordan. Now I'm sure that these people were missing Moses, but they immediately accepted Joshua as their leader. They said, as we obeyed Moses, we will also obey you. Isn't that incredible? Today, we are learning all about how God speaks words of encouragement and comfort to us, just like he did with Joshua. When we don't think we can handle an extreme assignment that God's given us, he speaks words that encourage us in our souls and prepares us to do the work that he's called us to do. What an incredible story about Joshua and God encouraging him and us. Wow, what an amazing story. Have you ever been in a place where you're like, man, I'm just not sure what to do. Man, I'm not really sure if I'm supposed to do that. We can always talk with God. And you know this incredible vehicle that we have to talk with God? It's called prayer. We get a chance to open our mouth and before we even start talking, the Bible says that God knows all about it and he has an answer. How amazing is that? Sometimes I ask questions and people don't have an answer. But every time I talk with God, he has an answer to my question, to my concern, to my worry, to my problem, to my situation. And we can have confidence in knowing that God hears us. And not only does he hear us, but he has the ability, the power, and the strength to answer it. So if you're ready, I'm ready. I want to pray with you this morning. So let's pray. Lord, I am thankful for Joshua and his story today. I can't imagine how Joshua must have felt that he was just not good enough to be the leader after Moses. Can you imagine? Moses is this amazing character. 
God, and you ask Joshua to step in and lead the people after Moses dies. But God, I am so thankful that you immediately responded to Josh Joshua's negative thoughts with a statement that probably surprised jo Joshua. God, you told Joshua, I promise you what I promised Moses. Everywhere you go, you will be on land that I, God, have given you. Man, that you would say that you don't have to worry about anything. Man, that's amazing. But to think that Joshua wasn't good enough, but for you to say, I will provide for you, that's an amazing, amazing confidence builder. Even for us, when we talk to you, that God, you will provide for us. I'm also grateful today, God, that when I say, I'm not strong enough, like Joshua did, you say, I will protect you. You, the great protector, that's who you are, God. Joshua must have thought to himself, man, Moses was such a strong leader, but I'm not. But you showed Moses and you showed Joshua how strong you were. You are our protector. And finally today, God, I am excited to know that you say, I will be with you. Even when I say, I can't do this. God, I know there are boys and girls, there are moms and dads, even grandpas and grandmas may be listening today that think, man, I can't do that. God, would you help us to realize today that we can do it, but it's with your help and you will help us do it. Help us to realize that we can't do a lot of things on our own, but with you, we can get just about anything accomplished because you are with us. I am so grateful and so glad that this story of Joshua taking over for Moses and you giving him the power, giving him the strength, giving him the courage to do it, that you helped him and it's a reminder that you will do the same for us. Just like you did for Moses, just like you did for Joshua, just like you've done for so many other people in the Bible and even people that we know, you will be there and you will be our strength. Was Joshua an extreme hero? He certainly was, but we all can be heroes when you're on our side. Thank you, amen. Rizzo anymore, so you can just call me R. Artiste. Now I'm in the middle of a brand new beautiful painting, but it's time for me to take a break. So why don't you help me with today's power verse? The thing is, last night as I was painting this power verse, I started sleepwalking again, and I was using pictures instead of words. So now I need your help to figure out what it says. Let's take a look at it. Hmm. Be an arm. I don't think that's right, boys and girls. The Bible doesn't tell us to be an arm. That doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Be strong. Oh, yes. Strong. Be strong and courageous. Do not be scared. Terrified. Afraid. Oh, there it is. It's afraid. Or discouraged. Oh, we've seen this before. What does this one mean? Yes, for. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you run. Oh, I don't think that's right. Hmm, what do you think that person's doing? I bet they're going somewhere. Uh, oh, wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. Oh, that's it. I'm so glad you could help me. Now, let's make sure that we don't forget it. So, everyone stand up and let's say it all together on the count of three. One, two, three. 
Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 9. Great job, everyone! You can all have a seat. Now it's time for me to show you a brand new painting for my new exhibit, Art to the Extreme. This one is called The Extreme Painting. I know, simple, right? That's what you think. Wait till you see it. Boom! Look at this guy. He's painting a bridge over water on roller skates. Incredibly impressive, sir. I don't know how you do it. Everyone, give him a hand. Fantastic job. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for all your help with today's Powerverse. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. You know what time it is? It's debrief time! We have had such a great time today talking about Joshua, losing Moses, that's the sad part, but what a great story about how God just connects with, with Joshua and God wants to do the same thing with you, man. He loves you so much, he wants to connect with you and he wants to talk with you. Now he doesn't gonna come and talk audibly to us. If we do that, man, that might freak us out, but he wants to talk to you inside, in your heart. See, he's your forever friend, and your forever friend wants to communicate with you. And so, just like God does with Joshua, God can do that with us. We just have to open our heart and open our mind and let him do that. So what I want you guys to do right now is I want you to get with your family, get with some friends, connect, and just chat a little bit about what you got from the story. Let's debrief a little bit. You ready? Let's do it.